Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Daily Word. Today is Thursday, December 30th of the year 2021. Sitting here at my dining room table, have Hudson, Carter, and Weston, all of them playing with their Play-Doh and making all kinds of shapes and fun. So um, if you hear lots of noise today, it's just because the boys are having fun with their Play-Doh today. So glad you could join me for our time together. We are almost at the end of 2021. So looking forward to the new year and the celebration of the new year. So um, a reminder that there will not be in-person worship on Sunday. It'll just be me at the church. Um, so but you can join us here on Facebook Live and then we'll gather again uh, Sunday, January 9th. We'll have communion. We'll have noisy bucket offering. We're going to have a carry-in lunch followed by taking down the decorations. So put all that on your calendar and plan to join us. So this morning, um, I've taken from the scripture, Matthew chapter 2. We're still at the end of the wise men story, but now the story, the celebration of Jesus' birth and the wise men and the shepherds and all of that takes a really drastic turn for us, as Matthew tells us. So the wise men had gone. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said to the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized they had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious. And he gave orders to go all the boys in Bethlehem in its vicinity who were two years and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. So when we last heard of the angels in this story and the birth of Jesus, um, they were singing glory to God to the shepherds in the fields. Um, they were bringing good news of great joy that was for all people. This life-changing, earth-shattering, world-changing news that they had given. But now the story... Now, now the story takes this dramatic turn for us. It's a, it's a terrifying horrible shift in the story where the angelic visits of good news of great joy collides with the pain of the earth. In an instant, the prophecy of Simeon's sword becomes this harsh reality for Mary and Joseph. And so Joseph is startled in his sleep and he has to stop everything he's doing and his position as father, protector, provider now comes into full view. And the wise men have now helped him to evade Herod and all that was about to take place and the wrath of Herod. And so they flee in the middle of the night and go to Egypt where they stay about three years until Herod dies. And so, you know, We've probably heard this passage before about what it means for them to take refuge in Egypt and how their lives are then forever changed. And this, just a minute, Weston. Um, so, but it's almost... It's almost hard to believe that the story takes this drastic turn for Mary and Joseph and Jesus. It's, it's hard to consider the overwhelming nature of all of this that's taking place and Herod's fury at being tricked by the wise men. Here's the thing about the story that I, we always ask ourselves, and I try to ask myself, mm -hmm. so... So what does this story mean for me? How do I place it in my life? And, and you know, we talk about that. We've been talking about that um, for days and days and days sharing together. Uh, I believe today, you know, our daily word today is, I can't remember what I said it was, 422 or something. 
in being in this conversation. And, and we've tried, I, I think we've tried in all of this text, all the times we've been in conversation to say, okay, so here's the scripture. Here's the story. Here's how God has acted in history, in the Bible. Here's what God says to us through these ancient words. And the question always is, at least I hope it always is, so what does it mean for me? What, what is it teaching us? What, what does it call us to do? How does it call us to respond? And there's this question, we've been talking about it for the last several days, this, this idea where heaven and earth collide. And now it's where provision and pain collide in the world. And this unfolding plan of God's to redeem the world, to redeem God's people to God's self. And so the question is, what would we do? What, what does this teach us? You know, Joseph, Joseph, whose life's been turned upside down, of course, Joseph, who's, who's pledged to be married to Mary, um, hears this news, initially quietly plans to divorce her, but then God speaks to Joseph and Joseph takes on this mantle and then the census happens and they have to travel to Bethlehem because Joseph is of the house and line of David. We hear the shepherds and the wise men. And now, in the midst of this story, where there's great joy, this news comes. And they have to go to Egypt. They have to flee in the middle of the night. And they have to live there three years. Imagine... Imagine the devastation that Joseph must have felt and how he must have wondered how to respond correctly to what it is that God was calling him to. But here's the thing, and here's what I think this teaches us, what Joseph teaches us in, in hearing from God. His response immediately to hearing from God is obedience simple action he responds to god's instructions through a simple trust he heard god's guidance through this heavenly voice he trusted that god would protect them that's a no that's a no no die he trusted you yeah, that was Diane being mad at me. So you all get to hear that. Ha ha ha, turkey. Hudson wanted to come back at the table. Um, Joseph simply responded with trust. And in doing so, interestingly enough, heaven and earth meet again as purpose and provision and this prophecy colliding with this awful person named Herod. And you know, we often hear the word, this God's word that nudges us along in life, gives us direction, but we don't always, we don't always trust it. We don't always listen to it. You know, I said a few weeks ago in church, you know, that we, we often like to make sure the conditions are right and, and wonder what's in it for me. But for Joseph, what Joseph teaches us is that when, when God calls us, we should be obedient. When heaven and earth collide in our lives, we should respond with trust and know that God's going to guide us and lead us and, and move us and shape us in our lives. This is a horrible story. All the male children under the age of two are killed by Herod in his quest um, to remain in power in his quest for greatness, if you will, that we continue to have skewed in the wrong direction, wondering what greatness is. Jeremiah said, a voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because there is no more. You could imagine the next days, the weeping, that happened in Bethlehem. And so, what's our response? What's Joseph teach us? I think Joseph teaches us, you know, that we should heed God's call, that we should respond to what God's leading us to, and 
and how God's moving in our lives and, and not question it, but to say, okay, I, I trust that God's voice is speaking to me. Here we are, heaven and earth colliding. And it's an amazing thing. Heaven and earth collided with Zechariah and Elizabeth, with Mary and Joseph, with shepherds and wise men. And now heaven and earth collide again with Joseph, trusting in God to go to Egypt. For us, I think as we head into a new year, you know, and, and all that a new year holds, you know, we have great hopes for New Year's, even though we know that it might be a struggle as we enter into the new year. We just trust that God is always going ahead of us, leading the way, um, always in our lives, having heaven and earth collide and smoothing the rough places, as Isaiah says to us. So Joseph responds and does what God calls him to do. And I think for us too, we're called to that kind of obedience in our lives. So, may you know of grace, may you know of this kind of heaven and earth colliding in your life in really powerful ways. May you know of God's love that surrounds you. May you know of my love for all of you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, New Year's Eve at 10 a.m. Have a great day.